This is Ask Evelyn, where we answer your questions about compost, garbage, recycling, and, you know, other trash-related items. So um, Evelyn has been answering people's questions on this very topic since the early 90s. She originally appeared to us as an envelope with some jaunty gloves where you would write us, you know, letters in an envelope and send them and to her an answer. And a little hat. Yeah, little gloves. Hat. Right. Um, and so Pat and I are here to kind of pick up the mantle of Ask Evelyn and Answer Your Questions. So really quickly, I'm Becca Fong, and I do single family outreach for Seattle Public Utilities. And I'm joined with Pat Recycles, who's going to introduce himself here in a minute. So my name is Pat Kaufman. I am Pat Recycles on Twitter. And I am commercial recycling and composting is what I manage for Seattle Public Utilities. Work with businesses, help them recycle and compost. Awesome. So... This is our this is our second our second iteration of Ask Evelyn for Where Does It Go Wednesdays, and we're really excited to come with come to you guys today. Um, we've got we're going to be talking about composting. We get a lot of questions about what to do with your compost and what things go in the composting. We have two really great questions that I think will help answer a lot of those a lot of the questions that people have a lot. So um, I think maybe Pat, do you want to kick us off with our first question? Sure. So a question came in, and it is a. Um... When I get food to go, I'm always confused about which containers are recyclable or compostable. It seems like most stuff should be compostable. Any tips? Great question. Well, yeah, so the question is really, you know, when you get to go food, take out, and a lot of that's happening these days, of course. It's pretty much the norm. Um, question is, is the to go container a compostable container or a recyclable one? And there's some tips we can pass along that will guide you in that process. Um, Usually manufacturers of compostable packaging will put the word compostable on the package. They don't always do it. There's no law that requires it. I just got some uh, visual aids there. That's a, a utensil, a single use compostable utensil. But yeah, any kind of a clamshell or to-go container. Um, we have pictures on our website. This is, a, um, this is a guide that we have on the Where Does It Go website. So any of these containers in the middle here, they, they would be products that are tested and approved. So all the products that are compostable in the Seattle program have to be tested by the compost facilities. A manufacturer cannot just make a compostable item and be, you know, just put the word compostable on it. Um, it has to be tested through the compost system to make sure it actually breaks down and, and uh, creates um, uh, an added element to the finished grade compost. Okay. So I had a couple of other things that I wanted to share with folks too. Um, you know, you talked about approved compostability. This is a symbol that a lot of folks will see on approved compostable packaging, right? Yeah. Right. So you've got, you've got kind of a different version of that there. Yeah. Um, BPI so, is something to look for. Right. Cedar Grove approved is another right. thing. Locally, they're one of our processors. They so that's are. something to look for as well. So here's actually, I'm teeing that up for you, Pat. Yeah. So, the word, the letters PLA um, stand for polylactic acid. It's a, you know, it's a term that captures basically a cornstarch material. And that's what the compostable products manufacturers use as, as their substrate, as their substitute for plastic, for, for oil resin, you know, um, plastic product. So it performs like plastic, looks like, feels like, you know, acts like plastic but it's actually from corn, cornstarch. It's a different polymer. Uh, it's a plant-based polymer. So the, the letters PLA, along with the chasing arrow triangle that has the number seven inside, that is the PLA compostable marking. The trick on that though is um, just because a product or an item has that marking on it doesn't necessarily mean we want to have you put it in the cart. It has to be something that's been tested and approved by a local compost facility. So um, some products like, uh, Becca, we were talking before about, you know, a toothbrush or a, um, uh, you know, some sort of a cleaning tool or some sort of a product that isn't food packaging or a single use, you know, utensil. Some of that stuff, it might, in, it might have the word, the letters PLA on there. So it might actually be made from a cornstarch material, but if it's not tested and approved in our local compost facility, then we're not going to want to have that in the green cart. And everybody's wanting to do the right thing, right? You all want to like figure out like what's supposed to go in there. And so I think that that's, you know, those are some really good points. We want to make sure that this all gets broken down to actually be 
made into compost. So it actually completes that cycle of putting the nutrients back into the ground as a compost product. Um, so I guess in summary, we've got kind of looking for the word compostable. That's the key. Yeah. The word you can compostable. see here on this lid, we've also got it like, like straight up, this bag is compostable and then also has kind of the approved markings on it, which are right. great shorthand. Right. Um, this thing too, like we have a lot of to-go containers that are paper mm -hmm. that are kind of green. They feel like paper. They're kind of, we talk a lot about the shiny coating on the inside because that prevents the like hot coffee from leaking right. through your paper cup. When it's compostable, it's made out of that PLA, that polylactic acid, which is the cornstarch base, right? Mm -hmm. So that will break down in the process. It also says compostable and has a symbol on it. So those are really the things we should be looking for, right? Sure, exactly. And unless it has the word compostable on it, manufacturers will use all these earth-friendly terms, earth <laughs> voice. It's really unfortunate. It's just the nature right. of marketing. It's just right. the nature of like trying to you know, position yourself in the marketplace of packaging so that you have the natural plant-based, you know, earth-friendly product. Biodegradable. Yeah, biodegradable <laughs> is another term that really means nothing. Everything right. is biodegradable under certain conditions over a certain amount of time. But the word compostable is an ASTM standard. It's a test that's done on the product to ensure that it actually breaks down in a compost system. So really got to look for that word compostable. No matter how brown or earth-friendly the markings and, and uh, wording might be on the container if it doesn't include the word compostable then it shouldn't go in your yard cart so we're going to go to question two and this was submitted from um jessica and it says we switched from using paper towels to swedish dish cloth dish cloths for cleanup because we can reuse the dish cloths a lot longer they're made from cotton and cellulose and are listed as being 100 percent compostable but i know compostable isn't the same depending on your local composting solution are they truly compostable I love this question because it really gets to what you were just talking about with, you know, there's a lot of marketing strategies out there, right? And it's really hard to determine what is 100% compostable, right? So there's kind of what actually could be broken down in a compost system and then what is accepted in our compost system. And I think that first and foremost, looking at this, it's really hard to tell, you know, you can, there's no regulations on if it is actually just cotton right. and cellulose, even if it says 100%. I think that that mm, I would err on the side of caution and probably put that in the trash when I'm done with it. The awesome thing that Jessica is doing in her house is that she's using something. Mm -hmm. She's replacing paper towels with a dishcloth that she could use for way longer, which is right. awesome. Right. Yeah. So a couple of things there. I mean, like you were saying, if it, as we've said before, the, the green cart, the yard waste cart that we all have at home, uh, or, you know, you have it your, where you live, um, it's food and yard waste. And so yard waste, yes, food waste, yes, and approved compostable packaging, yes. So you really have to, you'll have to go to the where does it go lookup tool on the Seattle um, Public Utilities website sometimes to, to confirm whether something's compostable or not, or just look for the word compostable, then you're okay. But um, something like that dish, it's, it's great the company makes it of a plant-based renewable resource. It's great that the consumer has chosen a reusable item that's durable and will be able to be used, you know, I don't know, a hundred times. Yeah, a long time. 500 times. I mean, it just depends on what they're trying to clean right. with that item. Getting the full utility out of it. We've talked about that. Like, you know, use that thing until it's absolutely unusable. Get the full right. value out of it. All those things are good, but if it's not a tested and approved item, it's okay to buy these natural products, to use them as much as we can, get the full value out of the life of the product, but then discard them as trash if they're not truly approved compostable. Because a compost facility is a pretty, it's a pretty sensitive facility. It cannot, it may not be able to deal with the Swedish dish cloth cellulose combining process. <laughs> uh, you know, Right. I'll tell you a quick side story on that. An example is there's a uh, there's a packaging product out there that is made from a sugar cane stock. So you think of a sugar cane, that's a very yeah. like bamboo. It's very totally. dirty. Yeah. Well, they take the sugar cane and they shred it up and then they press it under like high heat steam and it, they make these little plates out of it. Sounds but awesome. It's great. It's so durable that it doesn't break down in cotton. <laughs> 100%, you know, bio plant-based material, but they right. put it in such a high heat and such a wow. strong press that it's so strong and the fibers get so entangled together that it just 
never really, it tumbles and it degrades, you know, um, physically over time, but it doesn't break down in the window of time that the PLA product or, or the paper fibers do. So it becomes a problem for the compost facility. So it's not approved. You know, right. So, um, that's where it's a challenge. That makes sense. And I mean, full disclosure. So those of you that shop at Trader Joe's, I bought these. You know, it says made from naturally, natural vegetable cellulose, right? It doesn't have any other ingredients listed. So I don't know what else is in them. And they look all like natural and awesome. Nice. And I was like, oh, I'll look at these, right? And I think it's the same thing that you were saying, Pat. It's like, I can use them for longer. And then the other thing that's really nice about them is that they are made from a, a naturally derived source, right? Kind of like the sugar cane plates you were just talking right. about. It's like, these are products that are renewable versus petroleum products. So those are always great. You know, I can actually, I've actually used these and I'll throw them in the washing machine and they actually hold up pretty well, <laughs> which is probably why they will not compost in the system. Yeah, think sure. about that, right. Right. But I think about, you know, as far as I obviously made this purchase because I was like, oh, that might be a more sustainable option. And it is because right. it's made out of a natural product. So the that's always a better choice. Yeah. Plant totally. based, renewable resource, natural product. You know, it's not a one and done plastic item. As it degrades and the small bits go down the drain, that doesn't create issues. That's a natural fiber. Right. One of the things that we see a lot right now, if everybody's staying at home and using the, the, you know, the alcohol wipes and whatnot are the, are, are the wipes that are marketed Ugh. as well. So right. like we're talking about on food packaging, the same thing happens in the wipes and the, and the uh, tissue kind of marketplace is companies saying that they are flushable or biodegradable, which th that is not true. None of those right. products should go down the toilet, go down the drain like that. Totally. And like the wipes, they don't break down. They're made out of like polyester and like all kinds of fabric. Like I have some wipes here and like, you know, you can even like see kind of like the polyester fibers in mm. them. Right. And so there's no way that this is going to yeah. break down in your toilet. It's not going to break down through our drainage system. It's certainly not going to break down in the compost system. Um, one thing I know you mentioned was tissues. Like we're using a lot of tissues now mm. and a lot of people want to put them in the compost and they are made out of a fiber, you know, out of a paper fiber, but our compost systems aren't really built to manage to cut to the chase, like bodily fluids, right? Exactly. Like right. they're not meant to break down all of the viruses and, you know, all of the bioactive material in there. So these need to go in the trash too, right? Yeah. And the compost facility is not permitted to accept, you know, people wiped uh, materials. So right. unless you're drying your hands, you're drying the water off your hands with a paper towel where you're wiping, you know, off of the countertop, a little barbecue sauce or something, that's fine to go in the compost, a paper towel. But a tissue, unless you're using a tissue to wipe up your barbecue sauce, um, usually using a tissue for some part of you, you know, and I'm just saying that those <laughs> materials should not <laughs> go in the compost bin. So you just want to be you know, it's pretty practical. I mean, it's pretty yeah. common sense, I think, but it is hard when you're starting with a material that is just fiber, it's just a yeah. tissue. And so people think, oh, it's paper, it should be able to break down. But the health department doesn't want all those potential pathogens or potential problems going to the compost facility. So um, yeah, keep it clean. Well, I think that, you know, I think buying something that's going to be used more than once is always a better option, right? So if you're gonna buy something make sure that you can use it as long right. as you can, you know, no matter what it's made out of really, right? Anything, that's our general rule for everything is just use it until you cannot use it anymore. Right. Just like just like these sponges, what happens is that, you know, you're using something that's made from a natural material, which is great mm -hmm. upstream as far as it being renewable. And then like you were saying, when it breaks down, when we're using it and goes into the waterways, we're not having a lot of microplastics. So those are a really good thing to think of. And then at the end of their life, you know, as much as I love my, um, natural yeah. vegetable cellulose sponges they, they need to go in the trash yeah i mean like we have uh dish rags you know just little uh, uh washcloth sized hand towels for the kitchen and when they're done with the kitchen like they've just been used too many times and right out of the dish uh clothes washer they still have a little you know maybe i wiped up garlic too many times with them or something so right. Then they get downgraded to the garage they send us your questions in social media or your ideas that you want us to talk about uh, send us a note at askevelyn at seattle.gov or feel free to direct message us as well through social media. Thank you guys for joining us and I hope everybody is um, safe and healthy out there.